We're now in the laboratory getting ready to mount our mandibular cast using our centrifugation record. In preparation for that, we do want to adjust our incisal pin down about three millimeters or the approximate thickness of that intercoastal record. Now we have our mandibular mounting stand where we can hold the articulator upside down and then put one pin into the mandibular stand and then spring the mandibular stand out over the other pin. We can then adjust the support pin here to level the articulator into the mandibular stand. And then rotate the lower frame back in preparation for adding the centriculation record to our maxillary cast. And then we can add our mandibular cast into the intercluzal record. And many times you have a curve of speed here where the casts are canted downward. And so we can actually adjust the front of the articulator down to level that cast so the plaster will actually stay in place during the mandibular mounting procedures. We can then add a mounting plate to our lower frame here. We can add some plaster to the mounting plate and to the cast swinging this around, making a connection of the lower cast to the lower frame of the articulator. So we'll go ahead and mix some plaster at this time. Okay, we've mixed the plaster. We first want to add some plaster to our lower mounting plate. Make sure we get it around the center retention lug really well. And we want to go ahead and fill that mounting plate up because we have retention lugs around the lateral edges. And so we'll add some plaster to that, and then we'll add a little plaster to our model. There we go, we'll add a little bit more. And all we need to do is just make a connection. So we'll swing this around, making a connection of the plaster to the mounting plate. And actually you can reach around and actually hold that lower cast into the intercluzal record for the initial set. So we'll go ahead and let this set at this time. The plaster is now set, so we can go ahead and remove the articulator from the mandibular mounting stand by springing one side out over the dynamic pan, then removing the articulator and setting it right side up on the countertop. We can then open the articulator up to remove the centriculation record, and we can now adjust the protrusive angulation using the protrusive check bite at this time. We're now ready to set our condylar inclination using our protrusive check pipe. In preparation for that, we do want to loosen the screw here on the analog so we can remove our dyne link pin and put it in its little storage hole in the lower frame of the articulator. We can also release the centric latch and use the rubber band on the bottom of the articulator to help hold that latch out of our way. We can now remove the upper frame and using a hex wrench, we can loosen the little lock screws here in the back of the articulator for the motion analogs. We can then rotate these analogs up to their highest setting and lock it in place with a little friction screw here on top. We also want to raise our incisal pin up a little bit out of our way, so we're going to raise that up out of our way so nothing will be interfering from the cast going into the protrusive check bite. So we now set our protrusive check bite into our lower cast, and then we can bring our upper frame around and set our upper cast into the protrusive check bite and push firmly down in the center here, and then we can loosen the incisal pin dropping that down to create a bigger tripod for better stabilization. We can now loosen the little screw on here on the top which allows the motion analog to drop down to where the axis element is moved downward forward, setting the protrusive angulation into the articulator for both sides. We can now remove the upper frame and go ahead and lock these lock screws in the back, locking that position of the motion analogs. We can then remove the protrusive record and add back the upper frame to the articulator. We can release the rubber band here in the back, re-engage the centric latch, and re-engage the dyne link pins back into the motion analog. We've now set our protrusive angulation into the articulator, and we can use this now to diagnose the cast for whatever problems the patient may have. Thank you.